Hi, this is Mark from LongIslandWatch.com, and welcome to another episode of Watch and Learn. Today, I want to revisit a video I did a while ago. It's one of the first Watch and Learns, one of the early ones. It was how to use a dive bezel, and I talked ad nauseum about it. Uh, maybe the real, the actual work, and it didn't start till like eight or nine minutes in. Uh, I recently got my PADI open water certification, um, so now I can actually talk somewhat intelligently about it. So I'm going to make today's video brief. Uh, I will go over to the table and show you how you would actually use a conventional dive watch. Um, just a quick note, I did get my PADI open water from North Shore Aquatics here on Long Island. Uh, I couldn't say enough great things about uh, the guys Mike and Joe. Uh, so if you're on Long Island and you're thinking about scuba, uh, I would definitely hit them up as one of your places to check out. Anyway, uh, oh, I am wearing my own modified uh, SKX, but I'm not going to use this for the video because I've modified it. And now that it's modified, it's no longer an ISO 6425 rated dive watch. So I have a dive watch for that purpose. So let's get on over to it. So here is the proof that you're talking to some sort of an open water diver. Uh, people have commented that I look lit in the photo. Uh, I, I actually think I do look like that, but it's after your uh, final open water certification dive. So you're kind of stoked about it. I have an SKX 007J, which is an ISO 6425 rated dive watch. I've done ISO videos in the past. Uh, check them out. I discuss all the things that make and watch ISO 6425, but today we're going to be talking about the dive bezel. Now ISO 6425 basically states that the bezel must be graduated in one minute increments and for what they call analog bezels like this one, uh, it must have clear demarcations every five minutes, which it does, and it must be protected against inadvertent movement. Uh, this one only spins counterclockwise, which is normal, and it also has some resistance and gives a click. Uh, so you are unlikely to spin it on accident. So let's get over to it. So how's a dive watch work? Well, when I first met my dive instructor, he was wearing a Rolex sub, and I said, oh, it's really nice. He goes, yeah, you like it? I said, yeah, I'm a watch. To explain to a watch guy. He said, great, because I never dive with it. Why? Divers pretty much use computers, dive watches, slates, etc. The days of using a dive watch, I think, are probably kind of going out of favor. I should flip this over. I... Uh, at best, the dive watch has become a backup in the arsenal of uh, the diver's toolbox. So how does it work? Well, when you're in the water and your dive leader or dive master signals the down thumbs, which is descend, you then, as a diver, rotate the bezel so that the, ow the, hour, the arrow is pointed to the minute hand and then you start your descent. This signals the start of your, what they call bottom time. And then you don't touch it. And you go about your dive, you do whatever, you see all sorts of great stuff. Uh, and then at some point, the dive leader gives you the signal to ascend. And at that point, you look to see where the minute hand is. In our case, it's at like 37 minutes. Uh, and you remember that in your brain and you start your ascent. This 37 minutes is your total bottom time. Yes, you're still on the bottom, starting to come up. You probably still have a few minutes to get to your rest stop at like, let's say you're doing a rest stop at 15 feet for three minutes. None of this comes into your bottom time calculation. Your bottom time is already set at 37 minutes. You finish your dive, safety stop, you surface, and what do you do with this 37 minutes? Well, you're really looking to make sure you don't go over the, non -de the no decompression limits for diving, which if you're with a dive master or dive leader, you're not going to no matter what. Uh, but you then would consult a table such as this, and you pick it up when you have gloves, and you, sub you uh, check out your submersible pressure gauge, which records the deepest depth that you went to during your dive. So let's say you went to 60 feet. Here you go. And you were down for 37 minutes. So, oh yeah, 37 minutes is right there. We are in pressure group O. Uh, if this is your only dive for the day, that's fine. You're done. You're well under the NDLs of, uh, I guess it's 55 minutes. Um, if you're doing a two-tank dive, 
you would then, then you come across here, and this is getting into open water certification, then you have certain rest intervals, brings you into a different pressure group for a second dive, you reference that here for residual nitrogen in your blood, all that other stuff. But basically that's the only thing that a dive bezel does. It doesn't tell you how much air is left, it doesn't tell you how much air you've used, it doesn't doesn't do anything like that. It is simply for timing your bottom time. And again, your bottom time is composed of the time from the start of the descent to the start of the ascent. That coupled with your maximum depth, the entire dive, your dive may be mostly, you know, say 30 feet, but for uh, here and there you touch 60. Your entire dive is now assumed to be at 60 feet. That's the way these dive planners, dive tables work um, for, uh, you know, the model of uh, the amount of residual nitrogen uh, in your blood. And then we get into decompression sickness, the bends, all that stuff you guys have heard about. Um, dive computers are way different. I don't have one. I will likely purchase one at some point. When I do, I'll do a video on it, but a dive computer takes everything into account. It takes the descent, the ascent, all the different depths and constantly calculates the nitrogen in your blood, how much of a rest you need to do for what your next dive is going to be, etc, etc. But in a nutshell, this is what the timer is for. And if you notice the unidirectional portion, all it does, so let's say you accidentally move the bezel while you're diving, it's making your bottom time seem longer. So pulling you more into a higher pressure group, into a higher safety zone, if you will. It doesn't make it look like you've been down shorter, which would be very dangerous. Um, I think that's it. This has been Mark from LongIslandWatch.com with Watch and Learn, uh, showing you how to use a dive bezel. Please like the video if you enjoyed it. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so. Have any questions or comments, divers, you want to chime in, please do. Again, I'm not an expert. I've got less than 10 dives under my belt at this point. But when I was in uh, Turks and Caicos recently diving, I tell you, it was the most pleasurable experience. Um, you need the training, you absolutely, uh, because they kind of just assume you know everything. Um, but so much fun, such a great thing to do. Uh, put your questions, comments, everything, queries down below, and I'll be sure to address them as soon as I can. Thank you for watching. Bye-bye.